Okay, so the helmet is done. I'm super happy with how it turned out. Now, obviously there's plenty more I can do on the software there and I will continue to work on, but I've got DragonCon coming up in a little less than two weeks and I need some repulsors. As I found out by walking the floor of the convention and as my wife mentioned to me, what I'm really missing are the repulsors. When you go to take pictures with people, when they, they think about Iron Man, they really want that repulsor pose. And if you're barehanded, it just doesn't look as cool. And so I really need to start thinking about what are my repulsors going to look like? How are they going to interact with the rest of the electronics that are going to be in the suit? So before I go too far into what I'm going to be doing with my repulsors, I want you to take a look at what I have here on the table. And what I've got here are three generations of repulsors that I've been working on over the years. First generation of repulsor, the plate so that it would house everything. The whole idea was that I was going to have Arduino based devices talking to a central computer. Now, early on, it was going to be a Raspberry Pi. So that's what you see on this board here. This is a Raspberry Pi with a sound module connected to the I.O. port of this device. This is an amplified sound out output and it goes to two small speakers so that I could test the idea of actually running commands from this over to here over USB and then actually piping sound out. And so what I've got here, this is my Arduino Uno. It's an original Arduino Uno board. And I've got some buttons hooked up over here so that I could cause the repulsor to actually do something. And then when you connect it here via USB, it will send commands to the Raspberry Pi and actually do things like sound effects. I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. And you'll see the repulsor here power up and turn on. Now, this is old software on here. I don't actually think it functions the way it's supposed to anymore, but it still demonstrates the whole idea behind the thing. Repulsor tech, 3D printed shell with NeoPixels inside the case. That allows me to animate these, and so they're not just on or off. They actually look like they do in the movie when you have everything hooked up correctly. And then there's just three wires going out they go over to my Arduino Uno, and that is Gen 1. That's how it all worked. Now, let me show you Gen 2. All right, my Mark II Repulsor. As you can see, a whole lot smaller, a lot more compact. This was built for one hand instead of two, but this is a Particle I.O. photon-based board, and this was going to be my first connected board. This was gonna be the first one that was gonna be able to operate over Wi-Fi instead of USB. Now, I never took it to that level, but that was already the seed of where I was going here. As you can see, I kept the button design here, and I have the same design for the actual repulsor. This is connected to the board. I'm gonna show you what happens when I run the software, and this one still has working code on it. First off, you're gonna hear Jarvis speak up here. This does have sound support. Take a listen. So a nice power up sound, and then this board will be talking over USB to my Raspberry Pi, and we'll actually get to hear this repulsor work. So one of these is gonna power it on, one of them is gonna fire. As you can see, it's then powered on, and then I can fire it. And you get a sound effect for it, as well as the flash of light showing that you are firing. And you can multi-fire this, so it's got multi-sound support, it can play sounds on top of sounds. This was pretty well flushed out at this point. Again, you can power up, you can stop powering up mid. And then if you power it down, and these are sounds taken directly from the films and they are really, really nice. There you go. So full sound effects, communication to the central computer. Let's talk about the third generation one real quick. It was an offshoot of this, but with the same code, the same ideas in mind. All right, we're up to Mark III here, and as you can see, this one is all self-contained, no buttons, no breadboards, nothing like that. This one is ready to go in the palm of your hand and actually be a repulsor. All the code still exists on this one that were in these to do the sound and everything, but just in this mode, 
it was designed to be completely standalone. So this again, 3D printed, it has your Neo Pixels on top. And then inside there's what's called a Gemma M0 by Adafruit. It's round just like this, it fits in here. And I went with it because it was one of the smallest boards I could get at the time. It was even smaller than the LED rings that were going in the Repulsor. So it was perfect for this project. The only thing about this one, it was a little bit fatter than I wanted, but you do one thing at a time, you worry about the rest later. This one does have a nice switch on the outside and this one contains a battery. That's all we needed for the cosplay portion of this. So if you don't have all of the buttons on, if you don't have the switches, how do you activate this? The secret is, is this thing hanging off of here. This is a flex sensor. This is a piece of circuitry that as you flex it, the resistance on this changes and then that gets sent to the microcontroller that's in here and it can sense how far you're bending it. So if I bend it a long way, it's going to have a certain value. And then if I bend it straight up, it's going to have either its maximum or minimum value, whatever the case may be. As I turn this on and there'll be like a little boot up sequence here. And then as I straighten it out, it'll cut on. And then as I straighten my hand all the way, it fires. As you can see, I can do that over and over again. And then if I close it, it will shut itself back down again. So that was the idea here, was that this would go in your finger inside the gauntlet, and then you would control it as you moved your hand. So as long as I kept my hand relaxed in this mode, it wouldn't light up. And then if I raised it to a certain amount, it would light up and then I'd go fire and it would fire. So this was the way I was going to control this. It's not a bad design, but it does mean that, let's just say I don't wanna blind people. It really presents a problem because it means that even if my hands are down, if I stretch my fingers out, I'm gonna be firing this backwards behind me, which isn't what we really want. So I could still use this flex gauge if I really wanted to, but to be honest, it would need to be paired with some other technology that took into account the orientation of my hand. So that's the way I've got this last one. As you can see, I have a definite way that I was going from generation to generation of my repulsor. So I've got a lot of code here from generation to generation where I figured a lot of this out already. For the version that I'm gonna build for Dragon Con, this is not going to go to waste. Uh, I'm going to take that original code, which has sound and everything. I had already miniaturized it to go on onto a different platform. So what do I have planned for the Mark IV? This is an Adafruit Cutie Pie. And not just any Cutie Pie, but the, one of their latest. It is an ESP32-S2 microcontroller. It is running at 240 megahertz, and get this, this thing has Wi-Fi built into it. Check out that tiny little chip. This thing is about the size of my thumb, has USB-C, and has Wi-Fi. So basically, this means that this will fit in the palm of my hand, so much smaller than the Gemma, but also adds Wi-Fi to everything, which means that once I add a battery to this, I will be able to put it in the palm of my hand and run the whole thing and get the communication back to my main computer that will be in the chest of my armor. So this is absolutely perfect. And then I can use this little sensor right here, which is a gyroscope and accelerometer sensor to tell the orientation of my hand and potentially also do gesturing to decide when I want to turn on the repulsor and when to fire it. This means that if I stick this in the palm of my hand in relation to the microcontroller, that I can actually then lift my hand up when it hits a certain angle, it will turn on. When I lower it back, it will turn off. And then maybe possibly something like this that fires it. Anything that I can figure out how to program in a shorter period of time, then basically all I have to do, take this one, stack this on top of it, put my Neo pixels, and then put the power on the back of this, and that will all sandwich in nicely, and that will be my repulsor technology. It's time to start writing code. So this is the part of the video where I could show you all the fantastic hours and hours that will take me to code this properly, at least with all the functionality and everything I need to do, but that's probably not necessary. So let me go, let me go write the code, and uh, 
I'll show you what it looks like when it's working. See you in a bit. All right, so I'm at a waypoint along the way and I wanted to take a minute to kind of explain the development process on this one. So I wanted to do really good engineering practices here. And so one of the things I started with was a template for any Wi-Fi connected Iron Man device, anything that would be included in the suit that would potentially have its own computer, I needed a template for it. And so that's what I did here, assuming almost all of my devices will be something like this little device here. So I'm started here with the template that includes Wi-Fi access, and it also includes how am I going to speak to the primary computer in the suit. First of all, the underlying layer of that is something called MQTT. And what that is, it's a messaging protocol that will allow this to talk to a central server, this being whatever device, to say, hey, I'm here, and now you can listen to me. This comes in here, it actually has a Wi-Fi client protocol, it then has an MQTT client that sits on top of that, and then I talk to it using a text format called JSON and all of these have libraries here. If you don't know any of these terms, that's fine, but I did want to go over them um, for people that are curious. And then I will just start blasting whatever data I'm going to be sending to that server and whoever's listening for it will be able to listen to it. And what that allows is that if I have multiple parts of the suit that then needs to subscribe and listen for, say they're listening for what the gauntlet's doing, or say they're listening for what a boot is doing for whatever reason, they can subscribe to that, listen to it, and I can have all of these interconnected devices that are going to be able to work together. So I then took that template and from that template, I then moved on to my Iron Man repulsors here. And this is, again, it's based on that template. And then I start adding on things that are very specific to the repulsors. So let me show you what I've got here without walking you through all of the various pieces of code. So when I plug this in, if it doesn't go too fast, you'll see a red. Red LED means it's turned on, but nothing's happened yet. Then there will be a green LED that will come on if it's connected to Wi-Fi. That green will immediately transition to blue if we are talking to the MQTT server, which I will tell you now is actually sitting on the Iron Man primary computer that is in my garage downstairs, all connected to Wi-Fi. So let's see if that comes up. If I can find out how to plug in USB. So red, green, blue. That's exactly how it's supposed to work. The blue flashing is every pulse, it is sending a signal to that server, it's sending a command to that server just as a keep alive at this point. Now that was all part of the template. Every device will do that, every device will come up, start talking to the server, give me this. Using this, I am simulating what I'm going to do with the repulsor. So again, this device right here, this is my accelerometer and gyroscope, and it measures gravity amongst other things because gravity, as we know, is just acceleration towards the Earth. So as I lift this up, what you're gonna see it do when I hit a certain angle measured by gravity, it will then turn white. And so that angle is representing, basically my hand is raised, but it's not raised at a 90 degree angle. And then once I go to that 90 degree angle, you'll see it gets really bright. And that will be the firing mechanism. That's at least what I'm thinking now. That could be coded differently later. And just to show you how it works, if I turn this any other direction, it knows that that's not vertical. So there we go. That's where I am right now. So moving right along. All right, so the new code is complete. It is fully working and I could not be happier with it. So let me show you how it works. Now, as I lift this up to the vertical position, you will see it cut on and I have all the audio working just as it did before. Actually even better because I fixed some of the timing issues. So you notice I've got this going to my Raspberry Pi still. That's a stop gap. Won't be going to a Raspberry Pi in the future. Again, I'll show you the plans for that, but I did want to keep the audio working. So here we go, as I raise it vertically, you're gonna hear it cut on and you're gonna see the lights. <laughs> there we go. That is basically that mode where the repulsor is on but is not firing. And then if I take it all the way vertical, you notice you'll hear, I can fire over and over again. 
and it will keep up with every one of them and then power down accordingly. And one of my favorite parts about all this is that the sound and the lights are perfectly lined up. I've got the duration set up, so you'll notice as this powers up, the light actually follows along. See, and then it hits full, and then as it powers down, it falls along again. Man, just love that level of animation, that power up, that power down. I just think it looks awesome. Two more steps to this process, two large steps to the process. I need to actually finish setting up the electronics. I gotta do the soldering. I have to do the battery, which is just an add-on pack. Gotta be careful there. Which is just an add-on pack on the back of this cutie pie. Again, provided by Adafruit, not provided by, made by Adafruit. I purchased these myself but it's just a battery pack that goes on the back, handles the charging, all that good stuff. And then, I, of course, I have to design what's actually going to hold these things up against my hands. So I'm going to be showing you the reference material that I'm going to be using, which is from Iron Man 1. I'm going to design those repulsors, make sure the electronics fit in there, then I'll be ready to go. Got to make two of those. Again, once I make one, the second one's just a duplicate, not a big deal. It'll be 100% wireless and motion activated. Let me get the electronics soldered up and then let me get the modeling done. Get them 3D printed. I should be ready, right? All right, I'm at the bench and it's time to get one of these repulsors put together so that I can get a 3D model done to actually make this look like a repulsor. All right, I'm ready to model the Repulsor. There was a couple of last minute hardware changes that I wanted to make before I started the model. Number one, this little right angle USB-C adapter. And what this is going to allow me to do is take one of these boards, put the right angle adapter on here. Now I will be able to charge my repulsors by sticking a USB cable into the bottom of the repulsor for charging. I mean, I won't have to open it up to do the charging. This is just one of those really nice quality of life things that will make using the repulsors that much easier in the future. It also means that I can also reprogram them without having to open them up. So little inexpensive right angle adapter makes all the difference in the world. So the way that this is gonna be finally laid out is I will take the battery the battery will sit on top of here because it's large and it needs to actually take up the whole space. I will then take the repulsor and put that on top. And then I will take the sensor module and it will sit right next to it. So as you see, it fits pretty well. I'm actually not increasing the size much beyond what the uh, LEDs actually are. I will be able to actually use the mounting holes in the sensor to attach it to the plastic. And uh, I think this will work pretty well. As you can see here on the screen, I actually have a pass design that I used for the repulsor. So this will help me get my dimensions uh, a little bit quicker. I think that this will be a pretty quick design. All right, so the initial work on the design of the Repulsor is done. I believe all of the components will fit in here, done all my measuring, even put a cap on it to see if that will fit mechanically. Now, what I haven't done this far is actually design the piece that goes on the hand, but at this point, it's important for me to do a quick print of this so that I can test it to see if it works mechanically.
Hey, sorry to interrupt, but this seems like the perfect time to tell you all about the sponsor of this video, PCB Way, and their awesome showcase of community projects. Are you looking for an idea for the next project you'll tackle? There are literally thousands of projects showcased on the PCB Way community website. From here, you can find the project, read all about the details about the build, and then you can download the source files for that project. And if you need PCB Way to produce a connected component, such as a PCB or a 3D printed part, you can order directly from the site. Got a project you want to share? Create your own project share the files, and if someone uses PCB Way to order some of the parts, you'll receive 10% of the purchase price back. Here's the whole process I followed to upload these repulsors for 3D printing. Anyone can now go to PCB Way, download the files themselves, or have PCB Way produce them in a ton of different materials. So if you want to check out this project or find something else that's amazing, head over to the PCB Way community website. Thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. All right, I have my parts here on the table. Let's see how my threads work. That is just about perfect. Let's now grab the pieces here. See how everything fits together. Let's do the easy one. Let's see if this fits in here. I don't want to push it in here. Oh, okay, whatever. Perfect. Let's go ahead and see what fits in here. First of all, we're going to do the main board. So this should fit in that hole. That measurement was spot on. I'm not going to be able to get my finger in there, so I'm going to have to have some sort of tool to, to click that on and off, but it is right there in the center. But my holes do line up perfectly, so I'm going to show up. Not enough light. Now it's time to put the battery back in, now that I know that it all lines up. Plenty of room to run this battery wire. I'll run that just on top. And it does look like I'm going to have plenty of room for everything. This is going to go down in here. I don't think I have any extra room to take out any height. I think this is about as small as this version is going to be able to get height wise. Then I will model the hand piece and then we'll get a functional prototype up and running complete with chassis, container, repulsor. All right, it is about 1 a.m. on Tuesday, so I'm running out of time to get this done. So this is when I'm assembling the right hand. And basically what I need to do, I need to get this assembled. I need to make sure that it fits, that it tests fine, that I've done in the very best I can at 1 a.m. to cross my T's and dot my I's. And because I need to start the left hand version, and I don't want to do that, obviously, if I, the right-hand version doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Anyway, so let me do a very quick, uh, get the supports off of this one. Luckily, these guys do not have supports. And then I will take apart any uh, existing one I have, reassemble, make sure that it works like a repulsor should, and then I can go to bed and let my printer do the work while I sleep. First of all, we pull out the accelerometer. We'll go ahead and get that attached. Looks good. We're now going to attach our sensor, our accelerometer to there. We're going to then get in. Now we want to get in this cover to make it where we push in the USB without breaking anything. It looks really good. I like the way that looks. Now we're going to put in the battery. All right, and then we take that on top of there. We're gonna take our ring. So honestly, if I can twist this down pretty, pretty good, which it looks like I can, I am not going to worry about the fact that just a hair of my thread shows there. And then we take one of our pre-cut rings here. There we go. And then I kind of want to check this. Can I push against it? Yeah, I can. I can push against that. I could put a USB in there and let's see how this works. Let me grab my right-handed glove right-handed glove. Let's go ahead and cut this on. So the blue LED means that we are connected. So there's off, tilt it a little, it's gonna cut on. You see the animation and then we can pulse it. Let's go ahead and get this on my hand, make sure it fits and it fits like a freaking glove, which is funny, of course. Um, but I've got that curve, looks really, really good now. It's very comfortable and go up and fire again it fits very comfortably looks just like the one in the movie even got my clasp here which are molded into it it's a little fatter than the movie but actually if you look at some of the other pictures not just the one where he's flying with it but those first one where he puts it on for the test his are much deeper 
than what he gets it down to by the test shot. So I'm happy with how this looks. Uh, I'm going to go ahead overnight, like I mentioned, print out the left hand and I've already hopefully accounted for everything that flipping the model will just work. And then tomorrow when I get up, I can get it off the build plate and go ahead and begin the finishing process so that come Thursday midday, I actually have some working repulsors that will go really well with my working heads up display. I guess that's it. 1.20 a.m. if you're wondering how long that took to film. Uh, and assemble and everything. So I'm gonna finish this up for tonight. Print. See you tomorrow when I start finishing this up. It's gonna be a whirlwind. Um, so I'm down to the point where I think these things are about ready for their final coat of paint. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, I've got this really nice metallic chrome that never actually turns out to be completely chrome when you put it on something. Uh, so we'll see how that turns out. I really am going for an aluminum look here because I believe that's what the original part would have been made out of. Um, but I guess I'm ready. Let me go ahead, let these dry a little bit longer and then I'll go over here to the paint booth and put that last layer of paint on there uh, before I move back into assembly. So it's the night before Dragon Con and it's done. <laughs> It's all working. I had to do some last minute just crap to it because things weren't working as I expected. That's it. I think I'm ready to assemble these. I've got to remove the masking tape and then put the whole thing back together and hope it looks good. It is literally 12.15 the night before Dragon Con and these have to get done. So here I go. Let's do some assembly and I'll show you what they look like. all prepped for Dragon Con 2022. Got our cracker here. Got my gloves and we have of course the finish finished repulsors looking awesome. Boom. All right. So again yeah, Dragon Con 2022 I got the repulsors done. Super happy with it. Now I just have to get everything packed up including the helmet, the arc reactor, all the charging equipment that all this requires. Luckily, I don't have a lot of wires that connect everything because I am going wireless, but that doesn't mean that there's really that much less equipment to get done uh, given just the sheer number of components that it takes to actually get this stuff set up and running. So getting it all set up, I'll do some footage from Dragon Con, of course, and uh, I'll see you when I get back.
keep everything on my private server. Working on a secret project, are we, sir? 